after that dismal, dismal performance against Newcastle, we need to see a response tonight from Ralph Rannick and Manchester United. We got six changes and we got the performance that we needed. Overall, it wasn't the most blinding performance there tonight from Manchester United. 3-1 winners against Burnley. The first half, a goal within first... Uh, the uh, Manchester United's first goal within the first 15 minutes of a Premier League game this season, which is an outrageous stat, but that's what it was. 3-0 up before half-time. Jadon Sancho, Ben Mion. Go, I'm going to give it to Jadon Sancho, even if they won't give it to him. 2-0 up. Ronaldo coming up with a third. Scott McTominay. Oh, cracking first half. Four goals to concede. Good finish from Aaron Lennon. Second half, completely different. And maybe we got away with it slightly tonight. Burnley weren't exactly... They were, they were creating opportunities, but they were nowhere near clinical enough. And Manchester United effectively cruised through that second half to a 3-1 win. I would have loved to have seen United go for, you know, go full tilt, go get that fourth, go get that fifth. But in the grand scheme of, uh, of, of what's happened over the last few weeks with COVID, with closing Carrington, with the ups and the downs, and what happened a few days ago, I think you've got to be pretty damn happy with what we saw there tonight against Burnley. Who was your man in the match? I think there's only one player you can really talk about, and that's Scott McTominay. I'll get into the individuals. But in terms of the overall performance, what we needed to see tonight was a response from Manchester United. Because it was simply unacceptable what we saw against Newcastle. And I think we saw that tonight. Six changes. Who came in? We've got Jaden Sancho started. Edinson Cavani started. Eric Bay came in. We've got Shaw and Wambasaka came in as the fullbacks. There were a lot of changes. Who, who else? I can't remember who the sixth one was. Uh, it was Matic coming into midfield. And we definitely had more control. Control, control, control. It's the big buzzword of Ralph Ragnick. That's what he wants to see this United team exerting. And that's why that early goal is so crucial for United, man. We scored in the eighth minute, and it was a wonderful finish from Scott McTominay. Nice play over to the right. Mason Greenwood cutting it back inside. Ronaldo leaving the ball. Scott McTominay just placing it into the bottom right-hand corner, opening up his body. He did like a couple of those tonight. Hennessy, I mean... Bernie might have lost 3-1, but geez, he was probably their man of the match. He, he had some outrageous saves. Seriously. Great goal to make it 1-0. And that goal in the first 10 minutes allowed United to... We didn't need to force anything. We could just play the ball forward. We were playing positively, but we didn't need to force it. We didn't need to play it through the lines too fast. And it allowed United to have a different sort of element of control. Because when you, can, when you score in the first 10 minutes, Bernie have got to chase you the whole time. And that's what we don't do enough. Why well, we're always semi-chasing a game. And it's harder to chase it, to control a game when you're chasing it, rather than being 1-0 up within the first 10 minutes. That second goal there, Shaw, by the way, how fantastic was Shaw? I think when he came back in, we definitely missed those sorts of right. Tell us it has been good. Uh, Delot has been good. But tonight we saw, I think, a lot of positives from Luke Shaw. So more so than Wamasaka, who I, I don't think he played incredibly well. And that, <laughs> that pass at the end there, what the hell was he doing with his left foot? But Luke Shaw, the confidence for him to run inside there, overlap, uh, overlap Sancho, give it back to him. Sancho cutting inside, the text took the deftest of touches off Ben Mee, and it went down as an own goal. But Jaden Sancho, yeah, the thing that was really important tonight here, I think anyway, tactically for Manchester United against Burnley, and that was these two players. That was Mason Greenwood and Jaden Sancho. And the reason I'm saying that is because they held their wit. Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood tonight there against Burnley, I think the width was crucial. The fact that we were able to always have an option going on the outside, we were able to find them, that we, we could stretch the opposition because we weren't playing too narrow. And I think if you if it had been Bruno Fernandes in there tonight, we wouldn't have had that, uh, that element of control. So that's going to be interesting to see how, uh, how Bruno Fernandes can play in that. But he's someone who naturally cuts inside. He's someone who naturally cuts deeper and wants the ball at his feet. Whereas Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood tonight, they were happy to operate more. It was more like a 4-2, four, four really, with like some natural width. And it allowed United to stretch Burnley. Had we not done that, had we sort of uh, had Bruno Fernandes on there and we played a bit more narrow, it would be far easier for Burnley to defend against us. But because of that, we always had options out on the wings. Cristiano Ronaldo there tonight. He got a goal. He got an assist. I think he did as well. It's Ronaldo, man. Very confident finish when it was but, but that shot from McTominay. Oh, man, Hennessy, cracking save from him. United in the second half. As I said, second half, you know, there's not really much to talk about, eh? But I don't really mind about that. I don't really mind. Um, because it, it, look, it's 3-1. We end the year with a 3-1 win. A confident, comfortable 3-1 win. And a game where the changes were vindicated. Six changes from that team that 
was so lucky to get a draw against Newcastle, really. And we needed a different sort of level of performance, man. It's, it's just that, as I said, in, I, I did a tweet uh, during the week after the Newcastle game. I said, look, I fully support Ragnick. I fully support what he's doing. And I fully support the fourth triple two formation. So I, was, I personally said, look, don't tell me it can't work. It worked against Crystal Palace for the first 60 minutes. You know, it can work. It's about application from the players. In the same way that that formation there today from United, it worked for the first half against Burnley until we took our foot off the pedal and we allowed Burnley back in. Now, ultimately, it didn't harm us. We won 3-1, confident. But we were a little bit shaky there. It almost felt like we kind of needed a fourth goal to be confident with our defence. Eric Bai going off with an injury. I hope it's nothing bad for him, but a standard Eric Bai, right? Uh, Varane came back on Maguire tonight again. I think, I don't know, it just, it just, really, just doesn't fill you with any sort of confidence, does he? Harry Maguire, he's in some mad, mad run of form. I don't know when he's going to come out of that. Now, one thing I will say about midfield, obviously I'll need, we need to speak about Scott Matomino, who was man of the match, but I'll tell you what, Matic might be old AF, but he adds an element of balance inside that midfield that we just do not have without him being there. Uh, he, positionally, uh, he's disciplined. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a more defensive-minded midfielder. And the reason that Scott McTominay was allowed to have the sort of game he had today was because Matic was behind him. And Matic was just filling in the hole there, allowing Scott McTominay to impose himself physically going forward and focus on his abilities as a box-to-box -box midfielder, which is what Scott McTominay is good at. I'm not saying that McTominay is ever going to be a Modric or a Pogba or that type of midfielder. But people go way overboard with the criticism of Scott McTominay. And I will continue to support him. As long as he's a Manchester United player, and that tonight we we when you use I, I suppose I, I was I think that don't always compare him to Fellaini, but it's a similar situation. Marouane Fellaini, when he started every week in midfield for Manchester United, I was like, "What are you doing?" But when you used him in the right situations at the right time, Marouane Fellaini was an asset. I think Scott McTominay is a good squad player for Manchester United, and tonight showed how much again we need that goddamn defensive midfielder. Man, we probably need two. We need two actually properly. Whether it's Dennis Akaria, whether it's uh, Wilfred and Didi, whether it's anybody like that, Amadou Haidara, somebody who's got more. Amadou Haidara is probably not the best example in that sense, but somebody who's a bit more defensively minded because it allows Scott McTominay and Fred to be a decent box to box midfielder, which, which they are. Now, Jaden Sancho tonight, as I said, like, I, I'm liking Jaden. Jaden Sancho is having like a just a slowly ticking season, eh? He's not lighting the world on fire, but he's doing okay. And I think that's good enough for me right now. But United need to make sure that this is a, this has to be the start of something. I think the last couple of weeks, it's been rocky because it has been rocky. You know, with, with, with Carrington closing down, with COVID stopping football for a couple of weeks, with COVID knocking me out for a couple of weeks. That wasn't important to United. But it's just been topsy-turvy, isn't it? It's not been the easiest situation for Rangnick to come in to establish his system, to get to know the players, to get to know Manchester United, and to get to know his new surroundings. And inside that situation, we're undefeated. We've beaten Crystal Palace, we've beaten Norwich, and we've beaten Burnley. Yeah, it was a goddamn frustrating draw against Newcastle, but you're telling me that's not a good first four results for Rangnick. Three wins and a draw. I'm absolutely taking that. And you've got young boys in there too. It's been a slow, a muted beginning overall in terms of the performance under Rangnick. But the results have been there. And that at this stage, at the early stages, is what is all important. Now, what we need to see from Manchester United is building on that. We've got Wolves, I believe, on the second. And we need to see, a, just to continue, a level up, man. A level up, because six changes from that team that were so bad against Newcastle. And I think, I don't think they were incredible tonight. I think we had far more control in that first half than we had, and probably had all season, uh, un, so in the last few games under Ragnick, apart from Crystal Palace. Second half, we took our foot off the gas in the same way we did against Crystal Palace. We let Palace back in the game. We let Burnley back in the game. We, we could have and should have closed both of those games out and not had that sort of nervy feeling towards the end of the game. But ultimately, we won both games. So the results are there. And Ragnick needed to see a, a, a response from, the, from his players tonight. And there was a response. It wasn't total. It wasn't complete. There's plenty of room for improvement. But my man of the match there is definitely going to Scott McTominay in midfield. I think Ragnick showed the fact that he, as I, I said this, look, Fred was his man of the match in his first game against Crystal Palace. And only a couple of games later, he's taken him off at half time against Newcastle and then dropped him here for Burnley. He's not a man who's going to have too much loyalty to players. Harry Maguire, uh, I think the fact that Eric Bayer is now injured again, I think the fact that Rafael Varane's not fit is pretty much the only team why, reason why Harry Maguire hasn't been dropped. 
people want him to be dropped, but the fact of the matter is who are you going to play there, all right? Same way that Paul Scholes wanted all the coaching staff sacked after Solskjaer was gone. What, was going to have no coaches? No, it's unreasonable. It's a, it's a ridiculous thing to say. Maguire, yeah, he's, he's poor right now. But Shaw, very impressed with him coming back in. I really enjoyed the width tonight that Sancho and Greenwood gave. I think that gave us the, our shape a bit more unpredictability. I also like the fact that Sancho and Greenwood switched wings. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that game from where we were against Newcastle. Jeez, you couldn't get any lower. Well, you could get low. You could have lost that game. But still, I'm happy with the improvement. I'm happy with the six changes. I'm happy with the fact that Rangnick's changes were vindicated. My man of the match was Scott McTominay. Who was yours? You let me know in the comments below. Who is it down here? Cristiano Ronaldo, according to Sofa Score. Nah, I'm going to give it to Scott. I thought Scott was just so dominant in midfield there. But Cristiano Ronaldo coming up with the goods again, just like Cristiano Ronaldo does. You let me know what you think about everything from that game. You've got to be happy with it. As I said, a first half, nice. A lot of control. Burnley had the chances. I'm not saying it was complete and total control, but when you go 1-0 up in the eighth minute, you're in control of the game. You're in control. And that allowed United to play how he wanted to play in that first half. That's why we went 3-0 up. Who's your man of the match? What's your reaction? What do you expect next? Were you happy with the changes? You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. Take it easy. Three points, though. Happy days. And happy new year as well.